So ever since I started this YouTube channel roughly a month ago, I expected a lot of support from my friends. But it turns out they've used this as an opportunity to just constantly ridicule me and make fun of me at every single moment possible. So now I've thought to myself, what if I create a malicious virus that will go into their computers and hack their world into an oblivion? I thought to myself, then I realized, what if I make a video on that and create it so that I get millions of views and hopefully this channel finally blows up? Then I thought to myself, wait, has someone already done this? Yeah, it turns out everyone has done it already, but they've only done it in Python. Well, let's see if I can create a virus using the Golang programming language. Before starting this um, video, First of all, I do not condone the, or I do not uh, think that the concept of creating viruses for the sake of hurting others is a good idea. And also, I don't actually have any cybersecurity background aside from this one book that I bought like a year ago and then never bothered reading it because it used Python 2.7 and not Python 3. Okay, so first of all, what is a computer virus? According to Wikipedia, which is a very accurate website. It's a computer program that replicates itself by modifying other programs and inserts its own code. So technically, if I were to make a program that just injects code into like a file, that would be a virus. So let's see some examples. So some examples include reformatting the hard disk or just shutting down the system in its entirety. So yeah, we can work with this. Um, also, um, I was looking at some other things, right? And there's different types of computer viruses as well. So what I think is a good idea for this program is a Trojan. A Trojan is a virus that acts as another program, but actually is a virus. Like, it's a hidden virus. Um, think of it like the Trojan memes that you can find on Reddit. So this is my flowchart. Um, so I, I just made this flowchart so that you and me, we could like have a better visualization as to what we're doing. So what I'm thinking is, is that I will be making a game and it's just going to be a console application and it's going to say like, what's your name? And then the user has to like type in their name. So the reason why I'm doing this is so that the user is engaged a bit so that the user doesn't get suspicious that this is just some weird uh, faulty app. And then I just tell it to wait while we're downloading some configuration files. But in reality, we're just installing um, we're just installing photos. And what the Golang script will do is go to the internet and get a photo. And it's going to be like provided via a URL. And then it's going to grab the image. And then it's going to save it into a PNG file. And then we're just going to make some random word. Or yeah, we're going to use a random word using the random library. I'm pretty sure Golang has one. If it doesn't, then this idea is kind of screwed, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now we can start coding this virus. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is create two functions. Uh, the first function is just gonna be the main function, which is the main file, all right? And then there's gonna be a second function that executes any sort of like virus-related tasks. I'm just gonna call it virus. Okay, so the reason why I have these in two, or actually I'm gonna call it create image, because I feel like if someone were to like look at the code, if they figure out that it's a virus, they're just not gonna run it. So the reason why I have two viruses is because um, I don't want, to, uh, the, no, the reason why I have two functions is because I don't want the uh, code to be super messy. And I just, yeah, I don't want it to be super messy. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is make a while loop or a for loop because in Golang doesn't have while loops. So it's gonna be for true, so that means that it's just gonna keep on running. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is find a URL that we can that we will be decoding. So I've actually opened one up already, and it's just, and I'm just gonna copy this link out. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, create a variable for it. So I'm gonna call it URL, declarative operator is equal to, and then this link. Okay, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is actually get the URL from the internet. So to do this, we need to, first of all, get the uh, HTTP library. 
So it's net slash HTTP. And uh, this is a very good library and it's going to be used in the, like it's used in web dev. Okay. So I'm just going to go response. Uh, response because I, that's, I want the response comma E, which is, just, or error as some may like to call it, is equal to HTTP dot get or capital G dot get the URL. Okay. And then we also just want to check if error is in equal to null and blah, blah, blah. Then just panic error. Uh, panic error. Okay. Uh, what's the issue here? Uh, yeah, okay. The next thing we're going to want to do is... Uh, oh, yeah, we also want to close the response. Because what happens is that sometimes that would, like, sometimes when you grab a response, right? Well, let's suppose if it's, like, um, a fake URL or a dead link, then what happens is that it just keeps on running, which could lead to memory leaks. So we're just going to go defer uh, response.body.close. Stop body dot close. We're just closing this up. Sorry, I can't actually see my keyboard right now. All right. The next thing we're going to want to do is create our, uh, like we're going to want to randomly generate our, uh, our file. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a random object. So I'm not actually like a, a super cool, like a super expert at Golang per se. So I don't actually know how to generate random strings, but what I do know how to do is generate random numbers. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to generate a random number and convert that into a string. Okay, and if any of you guys do know how to generate random letters, please leave that in the comments because I would like to see that. Okay, so we're going to make a new variable called uh, name and set it to a declarative operator is equal to uh, the random dot int. So now it just generates a random integer. Okay, then what I do is I make a file. All right, and I'm going to use the same error, declarative operator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. Uh, oh, I don't have the OS library installed. So, or I do have it installed, I just don't have it specified. So it's just OS. Okay, and I'm just going to go OS dot create. OS dot create. And it's just going to create it. So I'm going to first of all take the uh, string conv dot uh, to an integer, and it's going to be a name plus dot jpeg. JPEG. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, and then if error is equal, uh, yeah, if error is unequal to nil, then throw an error. So panic error. Okay. Uh, now we can actually close the file because, uh, well, we don't need the file anymore, right? So now we're going to just close this defer file dot close. Okay. Now the final thing we're going to want to actually do is take the file and what we're going to want to do is dump the, uh, the given, um, URL, like the, the response because we grabbed the URL and now when we grab the URL, we're given an image. Now we want to take the response and throw it right into the file itself. So we're gonna go uh, underscore comma error. So you use an underscore in Go when you don't actually want, a, like you don't want an actual variable. You just want that to run one time. So now I don't have to like, I don't get that error that, you know how when you get the error that so-and-so variable is not used. So I would go IO because uh, I have to use input and output. Actually, I think I haven't installed, like specified that. So I'll go IO, IO dot copy. And it's going to be the file and the response dot body. So yeah, so basically I'm just decoding the file and all the data is usually located in the body. Um, of course, if this was a web page, that would be different. But since this is an image, we know it full well.
So if error is unequal to null, then panic error. Okay. And now, oh yeah, and we also need to make it look like we're actually doing something. So I'm just going to write fmp.print line downloading. Please wait. Okay. Now, in my function main, I'm going to want to call this create image. Okay, but before that, I actually want to like um, engage the user, as I showed earlier in my uh, amazing flowchart. So I'm going to first of all be like fmp.print line. Hi there. What is your name? And also fmt.print line. Welcome uh, to Yasu's video game. Video game. And next, we're going to just create a simple variable name string. And we're just going to scan the user line. Okay. And then, uh, so fmt.scan line uh, name. Oh yeah, and we need it to point to it, so pointer. Now we'll just simply print out fmt.print line. Just we're gonna welcome them, right? Because who doesn't like a nice welcoming, some uh, welcoming message? Welcome name. Uh, please wait. Please wait while we are. Installing. Okay, uh, let's see if this works. And uh, also, in order to quit out of this virus, you just hit Control C, and that's the same for any software standard. All the code can be like seen on my GitHub, and I will have that linked in the description. Um, so let's just see how this goes. So I'm going to go go run main dot go. Wait, what's the problem here? Okay, let's do this. Okay, there's a problem. Uh, HTTP dot response has no field or method body. It does have a body. Um, okay, wait, line 23 or? Yeah, 29. Okay, dot response dot body dot close. Uh, oh, capital B. Now let's try this again. Go run. Okay. Hi there, what is your name? Okay, so I'm going to write my name. Okay, now as you can see that there's just, oh, oh, crap, crap, crap. Okay, so as you can see, we've now installed all these images within like 10 seconds. So as you can see, we finally built up this, this virus. This virus actually works. Now, what you guys can do now is copy my code from GitHub or actually sit down and read through it. And you guys can compile it to an EXE or a DMG. And what you guys can do is uh, send it to your friends. But I will be certain that you guys shouldn't be using, uh, you guys shouldn't be making this like for the sake of like hurting someone. Um, viruses are a serious problem and they shouldn't be, um, they shouldn't be something that you should just play around with, especially in like a more of a legal stance. Like don't inject this into like your school system because then you could actually like risk the, uh, the data of other people. Okay. Uh, I hope this video was, um, an interesting uh, approach to you guys because this video, the way I've made this video is a lot different than how I usually record my videos. If you guys have any questions regarding this virus, please do leave a comment and uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.